Hello everybody, this is Yoko's Anime Reactions, and this is going to be my review for My Hero Academia Season 5 Episode 2. Okay, there's nothing new on that yet. Sorry, I was checking to see if uh, Attack on Titan had any new episodes yet, but I think it comes tomorrow. So, yeah, I don't know what happened with the My Hero Academia episode yesterday, because when I went to record... It kept saying, sorry, the video was not available, and when I looked at it later, I saw that it only showed the language as Japanese. So I was like, then why say it's in English when you don't have it in English yet? But I checked it later on, like around 6 o'clock, I guess, last night, and saw that it was there. But I wasn't at the house at the moment, so I couldn't record it. And when I finally got up to record, or up to do anything this morning, it was already 11 o'clock. I just didn't want to feel like getting up, essentially. And I normally wouldn't have to worry about it, but I had got called into work today, so I have to work three to close. Which sucks. Because I was supposed to have yesterday off, today off, and Monday off. I'm hoping I still have tomorrow off, at least, because then I can, you know, get stuff done that I want to do. Which is... Get the new Attack on Titan episode done, which I know is going to come tomorrow, because it always comes on a Monday. If Dr. Stone has a new episode, I'll work on that. Uh, I'll try and get as much done as I can, recording-wise, I hope. Please. Which means I'm going to have to set an alarm if I, I want to get up at a decent hour, because I sure didn't today. Anyway, this episode... Uh... We get to see what Hawks' deal is with Dobby because, as we saw on last episode, they look to be having some sort of conversation. Like, they were working together, and they are working together, but not in the way you think. The way you think, most likely, is that Hawks is betraying the heroes and working with the villains. No, he's working undercover with the villains. Because the safety commission asked him to, so they can get as much intel on the League of Villains from the inside as they can... And then the others will try and take them down on the outside, and then they can try and push them in a corner, and then they have nowhere to run. Before this, though, Dobby shows up to confront Endeavor and Hawks, and, um, yeah, thank uh, thankfully before Dobby can do anything to them, think of, what was her name, one of the other pro heroes shows up, thankfully, and stops Dobby from getting closer, and I don't know what Dobby does. Does he use the same way, same attack that or thingy that All for One used to teleport everybody to him back in season three? I think that was season three. Yeah, season three, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was season three. If so, how did he get that ability? Or I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we see those two talking. We find out that whole Nomu thing was supposed to be planned, but it was supposed to happen in a warehouse the next day, and it was supposed to be a regular Nomu, not that freaking powerhouse of one. And Hawks was supposed to bring a random pro hero with him for that, and instead he ended up bringing a dagger, which was smart on his point, because if he had just brought a random person, a random pro hero, any of them, they would have got. They would have died. They would have died. Because Endeavor barely was able to beat that thing. With Hawks' help, by the And, um, like I said, Dobby obviously does not know that Hawks is doing this undercover stuff. He just thinks that Hawks is betraying the, betraying the heroes and working with the villains. Um... <clears throat> But yeah, Hawks went through on his end of the deal. Dobby went against his because he was supposed to be bringing... It was supposed to be happening the day after. Not that day. Not out in front in the city, in the middle of the city where there's ton of, a ton of people. So yeah, I don't know what is going through Dobby's head, but I know he has a thing against Endeavor. And there's a reason for that. And it, the reason, um... For those of you who don't know the theories about who Dobby is, this will shock you. Unless you pieced it together yourself without the theories. In which case, good on you for your observation. But, yeah, um... 
I already know who Dobby is, what happened to him. I didn't know the don't know the quite all the details. But I do know who he is just based on the theories that I've seen floating around about him. But yeah, um I'm sure this will be a big shock to his family when they find out who he is. And I'm not saying who his family is because, like I said, I don't want to spoil it for those who don't know. Which, I don't know how many people there are that watch this that don't know at this point. Anyway, uh, they head back to the train station after he recovers enough to go home. He has a giant scar going down his, uh, his left side. Which I think is hilarious because it's... I, no, it's ironic because Shoto has a scar on his left side as well, but that's uh, due to his mother, and Shoto actually makes a comment about that, saying, nice scar, looks painful. <laughs> just, or he just left his sofa, that's just freaking, really, Shoto? It's just, it's just him. Anyway, um, yeah... I don't know if it's just me, but does, uh, last I saw Natsuo in season four, he didn't look near as bulked up as he does now. Is that supposed to be how it's supposed to be? Or is that just, uh, me making a mountain out of a molehill? Does he look different body type wise? Because he looks a lot more muscly than he did before because like his shoulders are broader look broader for example I don't know if that's supposed to be if he's supposed to look like that or if I messed up or I don't know but yeah obviously not so still holding a grudge against Endeavor for all they put them all he's put them through don't blame him and he even said that he just found out that his little brother likes Soba because they never got to spend time with him growing up because Endeavor kept him away from everybody else and I mean, I know he's trying to be a good parent, good parent, but I know it's a li slightly a little too late. But he's trying, and I know that only, no matter how much he says he's trying, that's not going to be good enough. Actions speak louder than words in this case. So Endeavor needs to do all he can to show, not tell, that he's trying to be a better parent now. As for, yeah, not so, this is going to be some, take some time for him to get over this. I don't blame him. And this is actually, I think, the first time that they verbally mention his brother, Toya. Because we saw him in a flashback. It was the one with the red hair. Though, from what I've heard, it didn't stay that way. Anyway... But, yeah, that's the first time they've mentioned something happening to their big brother, Toya. So, that means I'm assuming that Toya is the old, supposed to have been the oldest in the family out of the kids. And, yeah, I don't know if what Shoto said, out, if Shoto said what he said out loud or if he was thinking it. But he essentially, I think, is getting a little bit more respect for Endeavor. Not just as a hero, but possibly... As he's, tr since like I said, he's trying, and they've never seen their father do all that before, but he obviously, like not so, can't forgive what he did to his mother because his freaking endeavor drove his mother to insanity. Though I can't wait for the day where they put an episode in where she finally gets to go home. Because I'm sure that she's going to be showered with attention and all the love in the world, essentially. Though, if it's, I don't know if it's going to come from Endeavor or not, but, yeah. Anyway, um, we get another dream sequence with Midoriya, where he ends up dreaming about all the other people who have held one for all, and we see all but two of them. The first two before the, the first holder, and then the two after that. We haven't seen those two, we just see silhouettes, shadowy silhouettes of those two. Hmm. I wonder why. Hmm. 
Because the funny thing is, we see all of them but All Might. Because we see Nana Shimura, which was All Might's master there, but we don't see All Might next to her. So I don't know if this means that... Uh... It's because All Might's still alive? Or... I don't know. They just didn't show him. But they do show more of the original holder of One For All's uh, backstory and what all the stuff that he's seen from his perspective. And Midori's watching all this, obviously, and can't really do a thing about it. Even if he wanted to, it's just a, it's just a, a memory of the past. He can't really change it, even if he wanted to. And apparently the original holder, I don't know if he can communicate with Midoriya... But it seems like he is, and is trying to help him, I guess, with his abilities with One For All. I don't know. But that's how the episode ended, was with, like, how episode, like, the last episode of Season 4 ended. So, I don't know what's going to end up happening. I am curious. And I hope you guys are enjoying the show as well, and I'll see you guys next time.